Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Welcome to Postscript. My name is Michael Sullivan and I'm the business administrator here at FaithBridge and I'm joined by Pastor Ken who just gave a great message to kick off our Transform series and now he's going to answer a couple of your questions. Thanks for being here with us, Ken. Happily. Uh, the first question that we received was, Pastor Ken, we give way less than 10%, but we give a lot in resources. We want to increase our monetary giving, though, to reflect our faith. We don't carry debt beyond our mortgage, and we have just canceled our cable and don't miss it at all. What other practical tips could you offer for those of us like us? We want to be wise in saving and giving, but aren't where we'd like to be. Sure. Well, first of all, I appreciate the heart uh, behind whoever mm -hmm. sent that in. Uh, oh, that more of us would have that kind of heart. Mm -hmm. So, well, uh, a couple of thoughts. First of all, I can relate. Suzanne and I, even in the last month, went through a process of, of figuring out, okay, we've got to cut some stuff. We're just, we're, we're, we're being, I wouldn't say, well, yes, I would have to say, rich towards ourselves, but so many times we don't feel like, it. it's just sort of the, the things you get yourself into and you're paying for this and we just, wait, this isn't right. Mm -hmm. I suppose we had to comb through the budget 10 times to be able to, because you get so accustomed to, well, you have to have, well, you don't have to have that. Mm -hmm. And so we had to go through it about 10 times to finally get down to the number that we really felt like was the responsible number, the number that was where we should be. I wish I could, I mean, obviously I don't know the, the individuals or the family's situation, mm -hmm. so I can't really say, well, it's, you know, it's this or this category, because I, but I would say this, the best exercise that they and all of us, I think, can enter into is the ongoing exercise of evaluating it. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I recommend is sign up for the Financial Peace University mm -hmm. class that we're gonna run, you know, that's Dave Ramsey, mm -hmm. and we're gonna run a cycle of that. We're not gonna start it right now. We thought about starting it right now, but we're going into Thanksgiving, we're going into Christmas. That's just not a great time to start. But you can sign up now, that, that's online and it'll kick off, uh, I think, in early January. Mm -hmm. We'll get it going. And that's a great process because you have, you know, what is it, 10 weeks or something like that, that you, that you actually are going to grind through that and you're going to work on it. You'll be with some other people at your table who are, they're going through the same thing. We're all in this together and we're all trying to grow and learn and, and improve here. So I'd say get signed up for FPU mm -hmm. and keep taking the journey and, and w working at it. Yeah, and I like that suggestion because I think some people have an idea that FPU is only for those maybe in debt, and that's not the case oh, at no. all. This oh, is a great class oh, that, like you said, yeah. helps you budget and, and think through oh, those yeah. things and say, what are my wants and sure. what are and my needs? Yeah, exactly, and even those of us who we're pretty good at it, mm -hmm. just creating the um, environment that we enter into weekly for a few weeks and say, I'm going to discipline myself to grind through this again. That's a great exercise for all of us. Mm -hmm. So all of us can, can always improve and get better at this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The next question comes in and it is, what about a single parent who receives no financial support from the other parent and is on welfare and can't even afford health insurance? Uh, it says that this and other similar hardships aren't really clear. The only thing that comes to mind is, is having faith and a tenfold of blessing that comes from that and the example of the poor lady who gave everything she had versus the person who just gave out of their uh, wealth. Still, when I've done the math over and over again, I can't figure out how to consistently tithe without something else getting paid. And the writer even says there's several of us that are struggling oh, with yeah. this, and I think that is a popular oh, sure. question. Absolutely. Well, I, again, I appreciate the heart behind it, the authenticity, mm -hmm. 
and am certainly sympathetic to the situation. Um, you know, I think what I appreciate about this questioner is that she's wrestling with it. Mm -hmm. That's half the battle, just to say, well, I'm going to wrestle with it. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to work on it. Maybe go to FPU and, and see if there's some angles there that I haven't discovered and some insights. And so, so I appreciate her willingness to, to wrestle with it. Far be it from me. I know there's some preachers that would say, you know, sow a dollar and God will, is bound to give you $10 back and and so on, and I've seen some catastrophic things happen from that, so I'm not gonna say that. What I would say, though, is that I know that I know that I know that any time I personally or anybody I've ever known who loves Jesus has taken a little step of faith, you know, you, you, you have, I've got this much faith. Well, you act on it, and what does God do? Somehow or another, and it's never in a predictable way necessarily, he surprises us and shows up. And, uh, you know, like the, the widow in the uh, uh, Old Testament who the, the oil just kept replenishing itself. Who understands these, these things other than that when God is in the mix, things happen. So I would say, well... If you can't, if you can't, if you're doing the math and you can't see how in the world could I do that, well, w what if we start here and just say, God, this is as much faith as I have. I believe, but help my unbelief. Mm -hmm. And let him surprise you with that. And then when he gives you this much faith, r respond with that and let him surprise you with that. And because and, faith is kind of like a muscle and it will grow mm -hmm. as, as we, you know, step into the experience of, of, being faithful. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the word that I would say sure. there. And in that you had mentioned financial peace again sure. as an option and Great I'd just like to highlight that for situations like that we do have scholarships available because we do want everyone for the class. For the class. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. If you, if you need the scholarship, absolutely. That way they can also attend that. Absolutely. The next question is, what counts as a tithe, and how do we know we are meeting what God wants from our generosity? Good question. Uh, well, what counts as a tithe, I guess at the foundational level, the standard is a tenth. Um, but I, well, I say that's a good question. I, it is a good question, but, but I would challenge the question maybe a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, We'll read the second part of it again. The second part is how do we know what we how do we know we are meeting what God wants from okay. our generosity? Right. So see, maybe that's the point that we need to 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 say. Wait a second. Are you starting at the right end of this? Mm -hmm. Because if we're saying how much must I? How much? Do, you know, do I have to? Have we really got the message that that we were talking about today? Mm -hmm. Because if, if we really got it, then we're starting from the other side of the continuum and saying, in light of what he has done for us, um, you know, what could I do? What more could I do? Where could I show uh, love and gratitude and generosity? And so um, in a lavish, you know, um, radical sort of way. So I would challenge the questioner to go back and say, wait, 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 All right, let's, let's not just approach this from, okay, how much, you know, because I want to get God off my back mm -hmm. and make sure he's happy. No, I don't think that's, that's, that's not what we're going for here. This is something that has to do um, with our heart. And so I would say, go back and say, how much has, has God done for you? Mm -hmm. And how much has he saved you? And, um, and ponder that and then let your generosity uh, flow out of that. So incidentally, that's actually what we're going to talk about next week. We're going to talk about this concept of surrender because, see, it's not about what I'm giving. It's about what I'm not giving and why. That's really getting to the nub uh, of it. 
It's a good question for all of us, and I think it's going to be a good process for us all to work through next week. Mm -hmm. The next question is, what suggestions would you have for couples that are divided about tithing? Maybe one sure. spouse is all for it, yeah. and then one spouse is against it, and how do you handle that? Sure. I'm going to make an assumption, and maybe I'm wrong to make it, but whenever this situation has occurred that I can think of, it is always the female who wants to be generous and the male who doesn't. Mm -hmm. and this could be different. Obviously, I don't know who the questioner is, but, but let me address it from that angle first. Mm -hmm. I think of how it was in 1 Peter when Peter was writing uh, to the Christians, and the situation was that some of the Christian wives, they would have happily said, get lost, loser, and divorced their husbands and, and gone on. Mm -hmm. But Peter's going to say, no, don't do that. Um, you might be the lifeline to your husband for the gospel. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to have a winsome witness. Mm -hmm. And uh, because who knows, but maybe they'll come to trust in Jesus and have a transformed life. And it'll be because you stayed with them mm -hmm. and um, because you're an awesome spouse. So what do we have? Well, we have two things going on. We have the marriage relationship and the money relationship. And Bible speaks to both of these a lot. Mm -hmm. So the questioner is basically asking which one gets the nod. Mm -hmm. Personally, I'm going to say go with the marriage first. Um, and let's act upon the wisdom of God's word and say, so you just be a faithful spouse, as winsome as you can be, letting your light shine. And we'll just pray that he, or, and, and I think it works very much the other way, or she will see your light shining and say, okay, you, you're finally convincing me, not so much by nagging me about this, but just because I watch you and I see what God's doing inside of you and has done inside of you and done inside of us. Mm -hmm. And so I want to join you uh, in this. I would say let's start with the marriage and then uh, uh, get to the money rather than making this the line in the sand because that can really fracture mm -hmm. a, a, a marital relationship badly. So I think that's, that's the direction I'd approach it at least. That's a good answer. Uh, this, isn't, this last one's really not necessarily a question, but more of a comment. Uh, it says that my fears center around having enough for whatever my children need now or in the future. I know God will provide, but it's very difficult to let the illusion of us providing for them go. Yeah, right. Well, I understand that. Mm -hmm. I, I feel that myself uh, towards, towards my kids. Mm -hmm. I think um, probably this is... You know, well, I appreciate, again, the, the questioner, because even by expressing that and sending it in, what they're saying is, hey, I'm wrestling with this. Mm -hmm. And I think that's great. I think the person who ought to be concerned is the person who said something like, you know, I haven't thought anything about our finances uh, for 13 years ago, because that's when we decided we were going to tithe, and we we're going to give this amount, and this amount, and this amount. Uh, to these kids and we're going to live off the rest and we've just put it on autopilot ever since. I think that's the person who needs to be challenged and say, wait a second, a good money manager cannot possibly put things on autopilot, say we'll get back to, we'll, actually we'll never get back to this because we worked it out 13 years ago. You're constantly working on this and thinking about it and in our situation of, of managing what God has given us, you know, weekly going back and saying, okay, now, am I being responsible? Am I doing what God's called me to do in light of what um, we, we want to do for our, our children that is necessary? We don't want to be excessive. We don't want to set them up for the, the failure that excess can, can do, but at least what can be helpful. And then what do we feel like God's saying, this is what I want this year, and this is what I want to challenge you to and step towards that. And, and so it's an ongoing uh, challenge. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's, I think it's great, again, that the questioner is, is saying, I'm, I'm wrestling a little bit with this. Well, I think we all need to. Mm -hmm. um, 
And what we need to resist is this sense of finally, I'll have it all worked out and I'll never have to think about it because it'll be on autopilot. That's what the rich fool was trying to do. Mm -hmm. I'll just, it'll be all worked out. I'll close those barn, barn doors and then I can just eat, sleep, be merry. And, and it's just gonna be, eat, drink and be merry. And it's just gonna be great. And that's where God says, no, 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 no. That's foolish. That's mm -hmm. not the way I intended for you to manage what I've given you. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, I'd say, you know, jump into the FPU class just to, because you're creating an opportunity for yourself to go through a process. And, you know, every once in a while, we need to go through this process mm -hmm. again and say, you know, have we set this out right? Have circumstances changed? What's God teaching us? Have I grown in my faith? Um, and to go through the process again. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you answering the questions and sure. thank you for a great word this morning and really kicking off our Transform series by asking us to wake up and take a look. It was great. And thank you for tuning in uh, to Postscript. We'll be back next week uh, talking about Transformed and surrendering. So we'll look forward to being back here with you. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.